just found this little alleyway that leads through the Chinatown in Melbourne. It's going to open up, take us to a whole new world of wonderful, wonderful art. And the, there's a term that archaeologists use for narrow corridors in the ancient caves and the cliffs of the Pyrenees that's called cat alleys. Um, newcomers to the sport of cave uh, discovery uh, have a tendency to get terrified in these cat alleys because they're so narrow uh, that fear makes people swell and they can get stuck in them. So this little narrow alleyway as an introduction to a uh, world that we're going to open into in our next sequence is completely appropriate. There's a section that uh, proves my point in terms of the sophistication and um, ingeniousness of, uh, that you can often find in, in graffiti art that has a kinship with some of the, the best known artists of the 20th century. Um, the uh, tin galvanized tin uh, sculptural structures on the roof remind me very much of certain Rauschenbergs that were in his retrospective at the Museum of Modern Art not long ago. And here uh, we have other interesting touches. Look at this vent with a beautiful little bird on it and then all the crazy calligraphy scattered around it, almost as if that, as if that were her nest. Um, unexpected color combinations. Lots of, um, you know, interesting overlays, things painted on top of other objects. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful art experience. One that I, I hope I can capture in, in as much of my work as possible. We just found a segment of wall which includes something that does relate to the bricolage I mentioned earlier. Um, in my series of murals called Pandora's Box, um, as I painted it, uh, as I painted over the newspaper surf surface, I found imagery that related to the um, artistic theme I was explicating. Here on the wall, there's some beautiful tattered newspaper images that were, uh, whose presence is important and is left here. Because after all, this kind of wall art out in public is, is part of human history. And I tried to connect with that in my own artwork. History of perception, history of human activity, um, marks left behind by both people and animals. Uh, all of it is fascinating. Here, the brickwork has a fascination. All these uh, bits of paint are put on top of uh, a layer of human activity. The brick wall, the benches, um, all are parts of human life that deserve attention and are seen in a new way when they're combined with this kind of spontaneous, wonderful response to a plain surface. One of the theories of cave art is that they were a cultural encyclopedia used by the shamans of the early Ice Age to teach the children um, about the animals and about their culture. And in so doing, uh, the, the uh, shaman who guided the children through the caves took them through dark corners and mysterious locations where um, a horse or a bison might be leaping forward. That way they could be frightened into remembering the important things he was telling them. So here we have a little alcove that's dark and creepy and um, instinctively the artist of our era uh, made a scary face, a scary monster, uh, ready to, to leap out. It's a way of, of, a way of being dramatic, of uh, making an impression, and it's something that has prevailed all these hundreds of thousands of years. Uh, found lines, parts of stars, uh, segments of things, 
all these kinds of occurrences are things that 20th century, very sophisticated artists included in their work. And I count myself among them. Um, 